Hey everybody, Tracy Brown here. I am, you're gonna watch me put a pizza in the oven because I'm hungry and it's not exactly dinner, but it's not exactly lunchtime either. So, but the best I had was pizza, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so anyway, you're gonna hear some beeping and watch me put my pizza in the oven and talk to you <laughs> until this is done and then I'm gonna eat. Um, so I was actually, um, driving home today from some appointments with clients and so I'll tell you my, about my day a little bit is that I had the most awesome two hours this morning with my dietitians, coaches, um, people who are interested in general and you know, having more and more people look at this. Yum. It's a little guy I think. It's a little pizza but enough for like pre-dinner snack. I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, not that you care, but um, anyway, um, I had the most amazing couple hours today working with my new trainees in my intuitive eating counseling skills group. Oh my gosh, it was so great. I'm so excited. These people are already amazing and excited just for the next 12 weeks plus to go by and watch their skills grow and grow until they feel so confident that they can work with so many people and help this world be free from diet trauma and the ickiness around fat phobia and prejudice and all that and really help people come home to their bodies so that's kind of my tagline and that's what i'm helping them do too so it was amazing oh my gosh i mean not only is this going to be deep personal work for them but just the how to's of of helping whoever needs it and wants it basically so that's why i'm so excited today and probably why i missed like I had a quick lunch and a quick snack and why I'm so hungry now, I'm gonna eat a pizza <laughs> as soon as um, I'm done talking to you. So that's in the oven. And you know, I was, but I also had some clients this afternoon and the theme, not just today, but in general has been, I'm noticing the pace of people's um, a little bit louder food talk right now. And I think that's really, really common given the time of year it is, and it's not actually our fault that everything is so, feels like so fast paced. And just from a basic um, neurobiological thing, I want to remind you all that um, we are so, our bodies are so really wired and connected for nature. So when we are running around packing in tons and tons of mental, emotional, physical work into one day, then taking care of families, then wondering if I bought the right gift for somebody or I'm finishing finals or um, my kids are finishing finals and I'm supporting them or whatever it is we're doing, we're working at a pace that's really probably too fast for our bodies. So it's not at all a surprise that we start to feel physically uncomfortable. And then we often translate that into the language of food and body, which will turn into, I feel uncomfortable, I feel, when I say we feel uncomfortable, we might say, oh, my food feels like it's too much or I feel fat or whatever it is we're telling ourselves. And what I'm noticing this week is a couple of things that people are dropping off on their self-care, their um, ability to be present for their work to try to do for themselves, like their appointments or their self-care or whatever. That's all starting to go by the wayside because we've just been so well trained that what's out there is more important than what's in here. The relationship to ourselves, our relationship with the pacing at which life feels good, even our relationship with God or whatever you believe in, um, that gets kind of thrown out the window. And so I was feeling really sad about that. I was driving back home from appointments and it was like, you know, people are struggling a little bit more now. And it's not because sometimes it's the more pressure, but I just think it's like we get really amped up in our bodies and it feels overwhelming. So today I want to talk about how it's not your fault that the pacing of everything might feel kind of fast right now but it's up to us to decide which path we're gonna take about that. Okay, so for example, um, when people talk about self-care, if you Google this on the internet, you're not gonna find like, what is your self-care around food and weight? You're gonna see a lot of weight loss talk, which is totally wrong, of course. It's gonna get people into a deeper disconnected trap. We all know that. Um, so it's hard to find things. So what I was thinking is, let's today, and anybody who wants to chip in with your thoughts or comments, I'm happy to hear about it. But what you do when things feel too fast paced and you start to feel physically just jittery or uncomfortable or you start to shut down and you just can't get going or get unmotivated, 
Um, that's your body and your nervous system saying too much, too much, basically. And that's, I see it impact people's food all the time. You know, literally today, so I thought I should talk about it. So what I want to describe here is I can even feel myself being really, really fast right now, really fast. And partly it's because I'm hungry and partly it's because um, I've been kind of buzzing around too and I've got a lot more going on right now. And so what I want to do with you live here is not only notice how just because I noticed that I was running fast, I could feel the adrenaline in my system going quickly, that the first thing I did for myself was slow down the pacing of how I speak. And it went from higher, if you notice my tone, to lower, which automatically starts to resonate a slower pace in your system, in your nervous system, which is good. And I already feel calmer. And one of the reasons I started to feel calmer because I started to think about what would help my system right now, which was rain stick. And the, even the thought of that, my body, my thinking of that, got my body to remember, oh, I know what's coming. It's called expectancy. When I thought have this thought, I know how I'm going to feel, which is usually how I feel when I do or after I do this movement. So I'm going to do that with you now. And it's one that I have done hundreds of times um, in the last several months. I had the, the free YouTube video about how to do it and explaining why it works and how it works. But um, today I'm not going to go through all that. You can find that if you want to. I call it a shame reduction tool. Um, so you can use that. And I'm going to clear my, my voice a lot too because I could feel that wants to happen. <clears throat> And so to do rain stick, you've all seen this, be some of you may have never seen this before, but basically it's an attunement tool to get a little bit more clear. So I encourage people to use this tool, honestly, anytime you feel like you need it, like you're feeling kind of out of it or you're feeling kind of anxious or whatever you're feeling, especially around your food, especially before you're going to be social with food or go to parties, gatherings, and maybe before you go to Toys R Us and get your kids stuff for Christmas, whatever it is you're doing, I recommend you do it. Okay. Um, but for those people who are struggling with food and body image issues, this is really important around just if you're having some negative body talk or being mean to yourself or you even just don't know what to do, I call it pull a rain stick. Okay. So what I'm going to do is raise my hand up and breathe out, and as I breathe out, I'm going to make a shushing sound, and then put my hand here, and if you notice a change in me, happily make a, you can do a thumbs up or a like, or if you notice any um, changes in my, my body language, you can notice that too, because if you're watching me do it, it's more likely that you might be feeling it too, and that's the point of this, is an attunement tool between not just yourself, but yourself and others. Okay. If you notice, if you're doing this for yourself, or you're just watching, you might be having some head comments or thoughts about it, like what is she doing, or how does that work? You can just notice that. Yeah. And I could feel more of a settling in my system as I did that. So for some of you, it might take you a couple times. When I first started doing this, I'd say the first six, it wasn't like a deep settling within the first breath or two, but now I can do it within a breath or two, maybe three, maybe take my time a little longer and get there. But this just this mid-tone range of like, I'm here, I'm awake, I'm you know, oriented to you and what's happening. And the hope is that that helps you be more grounded and oriented to what you're doing in the moment, your, your thinking, your feeling, and not so overwhelmed or underwhelmed or whatever's happening. Um, and so a, t a way that can be really helpful with your food is just to slow down some of that negative thinking you might have about it or the overwhelm about making a decision about it. Okay. So we tend to look for really big things around self-care this time of year. Like I want to have an hour a day free to myself or I want to go to the spa for half a day or, or whatever. And those things are great. 
but what I am discovering, you know, for myself and all my clients is that we actually need a way to be in our bodies and not feel so overwhelmed. And a, again, that time might do it, but you also might need to do, again, I'm going to make a list of some self-care things around the food and around this time of day or in the year. And it's not really going to be a top 10 list, but it's going to be a top maybe five or so. I'm not sure. But to make your life easier around self-care, there is going to be a level of preparation. So I do want you to take a half hour today, on Friday, whatever day you can get to this and actually look at your schedule for the next, I think, three weeks before, no, 20 days. Yeah, three weeks till if you celebrate Christmas, great. If you don't, it's okay. Um, I notice that even people who don't celebrate Christmas, there's this like build up of pressure of like it's the end of the year and next year's a new year. And for some people, that can bring just this anticipation of what's next, and that can feel good or it might not feel good. Um, but definitely if you're a person who celebrates all the holidays right now and has a social calendar, even if it's a small one, there's more expectation. We tend to do more than we actually feel good with doing, at least I do. And what I'm looking at doing with my own schedule is... I've already decided today that I'm not putting meetings after my, my two hour um, training each Tuesday for my professionals, even though that was some of the funnest two hours I have um, today and I expect to have for the next 11, 12 weeks. Um, you know, I do expect that um, I'm going to need some time to come down from that and to like relax and reduce my adrenaline and all that. So I'm not going to schedule any appointments. So if you're trying to get a hold of me, um, I guess one Eastern on Wednesdays, you may or not get me because I might just actually have everything shut off and, and resting a second, or I might do a video. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll just be eating lunch and sitting outside. I'm not sure what I'll be doing. But those kind of things are really important to give our bodies a place of recovery from things that just cause us to expend energy. And that can be anything. Again, it could be your teaching, your caring for kids, your whatever. And so I highly, highly encourage you, like I'm going to do, to look at my schedule. And I'm encouraging one of my clients this week to do that, is look at your schedule and look for places where you can give yourself more buffer for being present and not go, go, going, which will basically bring you out of your body because you're going to be running on adrenaline and norepinephrine and running. And that's going to disconnect you, certainly, from your hunger and fullness. Um, okay. So give yourself some more buffer time. It doesn't have to be big, grand things. It could be a half hour. It could be 20 minutes. It could be you doing um, um, you know, example. It could be when you drop your kids off to school in the morning, give yourself, instead of going from this thing, next thing, next thing, take some time and get a coffee and sit for 20 minutes, whatever you need to do. So my thing is give yourself the gifts of some time. Even though you think that you don't have enough time, um, nobody's going to give it to you unless you give it to yourself. Okay, next thing is if because of busyness or because of um, expectations or whatever it is you think you got we have going on, is the, I know sometimes the last thing you want to do is think about your food more, but planning in a non-depriving kind of way can actually take a lot of time um, and put that back into the things you want to be focused on because if you know what you're going to be doing for the most part grocery wise and breakfast lunch dinner and snacks throughout the day and you don't have to like stare like what am I going to make I have food here just what do I want to do with it or I don't even feel like that now um you know having options and having some things that take a little more time and have some options or a little less time I highly encourage you to do that as well so that's going to take some planning and of course there's gazillion you know places for meal planning and recipes um, to do that, but really the bottom line, even if you, I've like this $100, you know, thing that I paid for, uh, a meal planner, but it doesn't just magically give me meals. I have to actually sit down and put my preferences in and spit it back out to me so I can print it out. So that's what I'm trying to say is that, um, those tools are out there. It's just taking the 30 minutes to 20 minutes to, to use them. And on the back end, you'll get more time back and definitely less thinking, and you can just be more focused on getting nourished and enjoyment and um, satisfaction, which would be great. And um, three, 
I want you all to think very closely about what you say yes to. And if you have a really hard time saying yes to things, your first response needs to be, you know what, let me get back to you, I'll check. But that's the only, re that's the only way I learned any kind of boundaries around invitations of things, making extra cookies for things, doing extra whatever, is it something I didn't want to do things or go places or give my time. It's just that I didn't know how to say no. So by the time you add up all the random requests, you end up with an overfull schedule and on top of what you already do. So if you have a hard time saying no, say, uh, let me think about it and get back to you. Because you might mean actually no, but you just don't have the ability to say no in that very second. So give yourself the gift of that space as well. Fourth, um, this is something I remember using a lot this time last year with my clients is, now I've done this <laughs> you know, every year for the last almost 12 now, but especially I remember talking about a lot, a lot the last couple years, is something I call bathroom vacations. You know, so if you're going to a work party, a family thing, um, a friend thing, and you get there and you're starting to feel overwhelmed by the social stuff or just the food or whatever's happening, go to the restroom, sit on the floor and breathe. <laughs> or, or this sounds even pretty weird and I wouldn't do it unless it's somebody you really, really know and you feel really safe in the experience. But I've literally laid down on the floor, locked the door, laid down on the floor in people's houses that I knew really intimately because I was just like, I'm so feeling overwhelmed right now. And I just need something to hold me up. And literally the floor could hold me up. So I didn't have to like stand there. I could lay and feel the coldness of the tile underneath me and feel something supporting me. And that can be really powerful. Or you can go in and breathe, talk to yourself, wash your hands for a while. Not in, a, not in an obsessive kind of way, but just a way of like feeling something sensory on your hands that can be helpful. And you can go in there, bathroom, do rain stick. You can go in there and just ground yourself by feeling your feet on the floor. And especially if you agreed to this and you really want to be there, remind yourself, like, I'm here because I want to be with these people. I like these people. These people like me. I'm okay. Um, when we don't have a lot of safety in our systems and we feel kind of overwhelmed by like, just new experiences, it's easy for like the, that old neural pathway to be in charge versus the new one, which is... I chose to be here and you know most of me really really wants to be doing this even though part of me is really scared and again all that can interrupt your food which is why I talk about these things because I'm all about like working from you know okay, here's what you're saying that you're you're troubled by and then let's work our way backwards what's going on and oh yeah being in new social situations and not knowing what to expect makes me just shut down my hunger and fullness because I don't feel safe or I want to eat because I don't know what to do with myself, or I'm pushing down the feelings, whatever's happening. Okay, I think that was, I'm already losing track. I don't keep track very well when I'm talking. I'm just in the flow. Um, to go along with that is that I think it's also important to, to plan those things. I'm not going to parties too hungry, not going to parties, expecting yourself to do more than what you feel like you can do with the food or family events that you can do, but also not you know, it's like, you know, again, that's that window of tolerance. You want to push yourself to the place where you're learning something and you're getting some feedback and you're challenging yourself not to stay stuck and safe forever, but you're also not trying to tell yourself, oh yeah, I can just go and wing it and I can do anything. It's fine. And you get there and then those other things come on board and you're like, I don't even know what to do with the food. I have no idea. So have like a safety plan of like, if you go to a party and you don't, sh and you go there and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to eat everything, get some food on your plate and take your time and go over on the space and give yourself the agreement like I'm going to eat this food and really try to be present with this and <clears throat> give it five minutes or whatever minutes you agree to five minutes 20 minutes whatever and if I want more food go get it not a problem if it's the opposite and like I don't even know what to eat you need to kind of have a plan of like okay I'm going to pick something that's carby a fruit um, dessert you know make a plan for the minimum you're willing to do even if you're uncomfortable in any kind of way emotionally so that's really important too otherwise you won't do it and um, but just because you're we're not able to access um, our goals and our thoughts through it it's just we're just doing what we're doing okay is there anything else you know I would say that again in general this is time to be doing more of what you want like to do whether it's taking walks drawing um, fishing whatever you love to do actually schedule time more of that because you'll you will have more of a filled up tank to do 
more of the things that maybe that are out of your comfort zone or maybe that are a little less um, comfortable and and known to you. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let me see here. If there's anything else, if anyone else has any other comments, anything I'm missing. Um, again, this video was just brought about like people. I see starting to like get a little wobbly with some of their um, you know, progress and skimping out on the things that actually have been helping them for so many months or weeks or even a year or more and recognizing this old pattern that we're going back to when we feel that like extra buzz of, of doing or obligation or um, gosh, just picking up on more of other people's stuff basically or your own expectations or more struggling with saying no or um, just more obligations. And um, again, we're, we're working on opening and widening our window of tolerance of like, yeah, there's more going on. And whew, that feels like a lot. I can be with myself with that. And what do I need? You know, what is this thing? Can I be with it? Is always the, the motto. So I think that's enough for today. Hopefully that was helpful. I have, gosh, a lot of stuff I want to be talking about right now. So I'll save it for a little bit. I might do another video later. I'm kind of in the mood actually to do videos today. Um, and I have a lot to say. So I might do another one. I might wait till tomorrow, but definitely tomorrow if I don't do one today again. Um, I think that's it. I hope you're all doing well. I go to check my pizza. Hopefully it's not burned because I'm hungry and it's been enough time. It should be ready. All right. Thank you everybody so much. Have a great day or evening or morning whenever you're listening to this. And please leave your comments and questions below. If there is anything that um, resonated with you with this, I would love your feedback. All right. Thank you so much. Bye.